Monica Farrar, and this is my MFA exhibition um, called Chaos and Order. Um, I am going to talk to you guys today about the works in the gallery, as well as have some slides of, of what, some of my many pieces that didn't quite fit in the gallery. So there'll be a few new things up on the screen. And uh, so I just want to thank everyone for being here. Some have come from far and some close. And uh, I especially wanted to start by thanking my committee, um, Catherine Reeves, Charles Gick, and Christine Wenchel. Um, I wanted to thank you for your support and encouragement and challenging my ideas and helping guide me to being the artist that I've become over the last three years. Um, their efforts, um, patience, and knowledge has helped me to solidify um, my ideas and build this conceptually and visually stimulating body of work um, you see around you today in the gallery. Um, in my, let's see, there we go. Um, I had my defense a few days ago, which is common practice in a master's degree, and I was asked two really great questions that I thought would be a good way to kind of open this discussion. Um, one of the questions I was asked was, um, if I were to say definitively, this is Charles's question, say definitively, what are these pieces? Um, what would I say? And the second question was, um, what do I know today of, that I didn't know before starting my um, MFA program three years ago? So, to address the first question, what is this work? Um, I would say that these pieces, I consider them to be dichotomies or oppositions. Um, these pieces are individual and these pieces are global. These pieces are ordered and these pieces are chaotic. These pieces are comforting and these pieces are uneasy. These mixed media monoprints on paper that you see around you are the essence of me as, as an individual and as an artist. They embody who I am as a person and my ideas about the world. I'm fascinated with the world surrounding me, the people, the information, the objects in my environment. I have grown up with an abundance of supportive, intelligent, and passionate and accomplished people in my life. Many of those who have traveled here today. And these are the people who have shaped who I am as a person and ultimately have contributed to my work as an artist. The contents of my pieces are individual and personal in that they are comprised of images of collections of organic and inorganic objects that I have gathered from my experiences in environments that are mundane and commonplace in my life. I love going to produce markets and admiring the ordered arrangements of fruits and vegetables. It reminds me of my father, grandfather, and great-grandfather's gardens and their rows and varieties of plants. It is reminiscent of my great-grandfather's job as a produce stalker throughout the Great Depression. And ultimately, it is meaningful to me because of my connection to food and family, coming from a Jewish and Italian family where both my grandmothers made the best meals anyone could ask for and were eaten together collectively as a family. I frequent <coughs> antique stores to sift through collections of objects grown over time through incremental additions. For me, these environments are reminiscent of my trips antiquing with my mother and grandmother in search of stoneware crafted by my Ferrar ancestors to add to our own collection. These antique stores also remind me of the objects and trinkets my family have amassed over the years. My grandparents' collections of objects um, gathered throughout their trips around the world. My brother's collection of camels and figurines that he started upon our trip to Israel. My father's collection of Budweiser beer steins and vintage cast iron World War I lead soldiers given to him by my great grandfather that he actively still collects and proudly displays today. These objects are referred to in my family by the Yiddish word chachkas, 
And let me just say, I have lots and lots of tchotchkes. I am fascinated by neighborhoods of homes aligned in rows and sprawling across urban and rural environments. I have moved around a lot throughout my life, changing locations every three to five years. But what made these dwellings homes was not their walls and their structure, but instead what they were filled with. The ability to organize objects within my surroundings is what gives me a sense of order and understanding of my life, no matter the chaos that arose. The contents of these works are very individual to my experience. However, they are also global because these common places filled with objects are part of a greater marketplace system. Objects are continually being created and consumed, collected and destroyed, treasured and lost. Objects are global in that all humans interact with things throughout their life. My focus is on objects that maintain a contrasting sense of unexpected individuality juxtaposed with ordered mass production, such as buckets of cheese, shelves of glassware, skins of vegetables, cars in traffic, or rows of houses, and so on. This allows my work to embody both the individual aspects of my experiences as well as the global human experience. These objects in my work demonstrate the dynamic back and forth movement of life from chaos to order and order to chaos and back again. This is what I see in the objects within these common marketplace environments. For example, a merchant may assemble a display of products only for the objects to once again become disordered, rearranged, and dispersed. These pieces this piece here, right in front of you, includes bundles of carrots organized in stacks along with silhouettes of people in the marketplace. Um, while this piece shows a tangled bunch of radishes beginning to break apart. My work examines the continual, contemporary, globalized gathering and ordering of everyday objects and their inevitable progression from order back to a state of chaos. Science refers to this phenomenon as entropy, the continual movement of particles from a state of order to disorder. I have discussed this throughout my research paper, but for example, when a person organizes their office desk and places everything in its proper position, over time the objects will again become disordered and rearranged. Within the, these entropy principles, there is also a paradoxical theory called depletion force. This theory states that with, within a contained boundary, chaotic elements can again become ordered through the use of entropic movement itself. An analogy for this theory is in a room full of ever-moving, bouncing, um, chaotically spastic tennis balls and large like workout balls, um, the smaller tennis balls would move and force the larger workout balls towards the outside of the room and keep them there through their movement. This would essentially establish an order out of the chaos. What is, necess what is necessary for this phenomenon to occur is the confined boundaries of a container. The almost square, but slightly off, picture plane of my pieces, the paper with its four edges and two surfaces, acts as my container. I fill my planes with large and small chaotic elements, and within these boundaries, order often established, even if only for a finite amount of time, and my chaotic surroundings are displayed. In my work, I also simultaneously embrace the continual surrounding chaos and an inevitable return to disorder. Throughout the development of my mixed media monoprints, I encounter instances of happenstance and accident, 
that I embrace throughout my dynamic creation process. My relief printing plates are very precisely laser etched into acrylic using digital matrices, essentially creating a stamp. They are the, that are comprised of digital e-collages developed by my drawings and photographs taken during my experience in common marketplaces. These laser etchings are printed in layers in a spontaneous and responsive manner in any number of varying combinations. I manipulate the delicate paper on which the ink is printed, folding and perforating the prints in endless ways. Through, the pro through this process, I discover instances of unintentional offset printing, perforations and folds in the paper, unexpected color mixing, random fracturing of imagery, and unpredictable pairings. In other words, my process embraces chaos. All these instances of accidents and chaos are incorporated in the development of the work and lead to my next instance of ordering. Even when manipulating the plates and paper in an intentional, orderly way, the result is always something that cannot be entirely expected or planned. Once my visual field has been filled, I begin to explore how the physical work itself is subject to surrounding entropy and chaos. This is when the paper itself and the boundaries of the picture plane begin to break down. As I pass my printing plates and paper through the press, the sharp edges of laser cut acrylic begin to break down the delicate fibers of the paper. The repeated folding of the print paper, layers of color, and laser cut shapes perforate directly through the surface and disintegrate the edges of the picture plane themselves. Teeny object shaped holes become part of the imagery and simultaneously make the work even more vulnerable to decay. In this piece, small cutout shapes of chain links and caster wheels act as additional visual contents and simultaneously contribute to, again, the decay of the overall work, breaking the rigid boundaries of the front and back surface and the edges of the paper. The lower half of the work is succumbing to the perforations. Part of the picture plane is almost falling away from the structure and moving from the two-dimensional plane to the three-dimensional space. Through this multi-stage process of digitally manipulating images, laser plate making, printing, adding painting, drawing, and collaging, my process of creation embodies my conceptual intention and the work deliberately, yet improvisationally, echoes the duality of surrounding chaos and order within contemporary environments. These pieces are inherently comforting and uneasy. I use represent representational depiction of, depictions of objects understood and familiar that evoke predictability, comfort, and understanding as well as abstracted versions of the objects, unpredictable and unknown, that trigger uneasiness, uncertainty, and inquiry, as well as excitement. The picture plane acts as a containing boundary for the range of unknown, unfamiliar, chaotic elements until the picture plane itself begins to dissolve, creating again a sense of uneasiness and anxiety. The use of presence and absence of key and bottle shape in the next two pieces shown also contribute to the simultaneous comfort and uneasiness. I use decay and absence to communicate a sense of loss once order begins to be broken down and disorder be begins to arise. The loss of physical presence of objects in their organized location leaves a trace of their previous presence, reassuring that order was once present and may once again be possible even after the structure is no longer whole. In this piece, teeny bottle-shaped holes depict a shelf of glasses that have also begun 
to return to a state of disorder, indicating a journey towards decay and former presence of order. My work is individual and global, chaotic and orderly, comforting and uncertain. It is through this back and forth movement between organization and disorder, creation and destruction, development and decay, that I am truly able to communicate the orderly, chaotic, and entropic process of life and its effects on us as individuals. Addressing the second question, what do I know today that I didn't know three years ago before starting my MFA research? I would have to say that I have come to better understand myself as a person and know myself as an artist. These two things are one. Many of you are familiar with the work I showed three years ago at my first year review or that I did before coming here. These pieces were highly representational works, depicting the same instances of objects in the common marketplace environments, but in a very different, very realistic visual output. I approach these works still concerned with instances of order and disorder in our everyday surroundings, but instead was exploring it because of my desire to order and control my surroundings. I have come to realize over the past three years that as much as I want to plan and order my life, the things surrounding me, with, um, without the willingness to embrace the unexpected and chaotic inevitability of life, I cannot fully understand my surroundings and communicate the world in which we all exist. I now better understand how to accept what I cannot control and approach my work without having a clear end result in mind before I begin. This new knowledge and approach has allowed me to create work that truly embodies order and chaos. The individual and personal aspects of this body of work align with the global struggle to find, balance, uh, find a balance between order and chaos. These pictures are an exploration of the human desire for comfort and understanding provided by organized, planned, and ordered elements and the human need to cope with the uneasiness and anxieties that arise with the unexpected, unforeseen, and chaotic. So I just wanted to thank you all for being here today again. And I invite you to enjoy the show. We'll turn up the lights and everything. I have a piece in the middle that's an experimental piece that is the um, remnants, essentially, of the pieces around you that have now begun to form their own piece and have moved around the, the table structure throughout the gallery of the show, so feel free to get up close to that one and just really experience what I see in this work. So thank you again. Thank <laughs> you. 